Good morning, Slas. It's nice to be back here as every year, and every single year I have the role of telling people how we are all going to die and the world is going to be worse. Actually, it's not my day job. My day job is in Zip tonight building a next generation independent communications, peer-to-peer -peer communication, radio mess networks, stuff like that. But the topic where I'm talking today has nothing to do with uh, the things we build. We can help to secure them, but this is all about Internet of Things and the human nature in development, which is that we will repeat our mistakes. First of all, I keep hearing from a lot of vendors, even experts, that the system we develop is unhackable. This is wrong. Everything is hackable, always. The question is, what is the impact? Maybe the hack is just that somebody may, uh, will be able to change the logo of your company on your marketing website, which has nothing to do with the security of your clients or your operations. It's annoying, but the press will tell the news you were hacked. And actually, a lot of people don't even know, including in many cases people in a company, what actually happened. So everybody is hackable, always. The question really is, what is the impact and how you make certain that critical information is always, always, always secure, and that is either impossible to be get in your hands, which means it doesn't take a role in a server, or it's otherwise protected so that the privacy is not violated. So overview. We are right now living on a cold rush. The cold rush is Internet of Things. Everybody is building a new device of any kind, from medical equipment, to the singing fish uh, about the, your, your fireplace, to uh, devices which are controlling a mission critical systems in our lives. Since we have a new class of devices, we have a completely new set of requirements. The devices have to have, been, uh, have to have a 10 year battery life or they have to be wearable or there's other things which we haven't been doing before. What this causes is a lot of, in order to shorten the development cycles and time to market, People are taking code wherever they find, using it very in a very irresponsible way, just plug it in, and they get a the, the device which is functional. But the considerations of robustness, resilience, security, privacy, they are never there. So we get a lot of bad concepts, a lot of bad behavior, a lot of already known to be broken code, which was abandoned 20 years ago, coming all of a sudden, sneaking back to our lives without any warning to us, even the security experts. We keep discovering every single day, oh my god, this code has been broken forever. Why it's, why it's back in use? Why they're using the old version? What not? So our old friends are back. The old friends are numerous. It's hardwiring the passwords. It's hardwiring the pin codes. It's relying on magic beef or all kind of weird, net, weird, weird constants. It is the night because the devices are completely new, they are full of bugs. It's about uh, using unsafe methods to upgrade your software in the device, which means that you use untrusted channel, which, is, which you can't be trust to upgrade the software, most, most likely also without any kind of checks of uh, cryptographic signals or whatnot. Uh, you have backdoors in order to di diagnose the systems because they are still a little bit on development mode, common line interfaces. Of course, encryption is difficult. Well, we have been doing it forever, but still a lot of people think it's annoying at the time of the development, the rapid development. So people are sending stuff over uh, clear text. Also for the reason of diagnostic whatnot, you have a lot of ports, you use a lot of commercially available off the safe hardware without dis disabling stuff. And the worst of all, a common belief that obscurity is a form of security. It never is. Always, always, always assume that your attacker will know how your system works. Your attacker will know everything you know. The system has to be secure without assumption that there is a magic knowledge which the attacker cannot find. And of course, cloud. We all love cloud. Well, the problem with the cloud is that cloud actually have a lot of good things. It's a scalable, it gives you a lot of processing power, but cloud is inherently unsafe. So placing a unwarranted trust to the cloud. And this, of course, is for a reason that IoT is all about ecosystems, all about sharing the information, 
most likely without knowledge of the person who owns and operates the device. But it's all about sharing and building ecosystem. And cloud is a wonderful way of sharing the information. You just don't know who is going to be the end user of the information, where it's going to end up, how it's going to be used. So as Mikko said, we also see our old friends somewhere where they shouldn't be. Mikko used a tool which is uh, finding devices from the internet. The oldest tool in the market is called Shodan HQ. This guy has been around for a while. It's, uh, it's, there's a free part of that, there's a paid part. And it's very interesting what happens when you put a certain kind of keywords into that. So you ask, for example, that uh, I want to find a control valve. You find all kinds of control valves in all kinds of places. For example, a school. Well, school has a pool. Pool has a chloride purifier. So all of a sudden, the system which allows you to dump all the chloride to the pool at once while the kids are sw uh, swimming, you can find that. A lot of things which people are not thinking about how dangerous they are. Also, as Mikko talked about cameras, on the right-hand side, the, the question is camera. In the United States alone, over 13 million cameras online and the breakup of the, all the countries. These things shouldn't be in a network. Most likely, the people weren't even thinking about and didn't re uh, realize that design the network, but it's because of configuration they end up there. Again, things get very easily very scary. All of a sudden you have gas stations, you have power plants, you have things which never ever should be there. And I don't want to know what happens if I turn the valve in a gas station. Maybe it's harmless, maybe it's not. So again, we are very completely irresponsible right now in what we expose from our systems to the greater publicly uh, available internet. And the things get worse. Right now, the Gardner Group predicts that we have 26 billion devices by 2020. Again, the economic income impact, impact is enormous, and it's commonly believed that we don't even understand the whole scale of that, because a lot of the secondary values of the, of the production chains are not counted in accurately. So it doesn't matter what we look at to be 600 billion or 1.9 trillion or 3 trillion. We are talking about a massive global economic scale problem. Well, when we go to history, actually IoT hacking was originally called a junk hacking. Every single conference had a presentation where people were telling, OK, I found this junk from my home. I'm going to hack hell out of it, and it's going to be scary. It's all started from a scales where people are just, you know, weight watchers, starting to look what their weight is. It was hacking the unknowingly singing fish about your fireplace, stuff like that. And those, fa those hacks were both funny and you know, a little bit scary. What really is scary is to understand that the cheapest chunk you have in a home has a lot of common in both design, electronics, common structures with the systems which are used in, a, in a industrial settings, in the hospitals, in a lot of places where those systems are mission critical. So by using the educational platform of, of, uh, of hacking your birthday card or hacking your singing fish, you actually learn the skills and the knowledge which gives you capabilities of doing a serious, serious, serious damage. Also, what IoT really is, we are thinking about IO things as Internet of Things, but we are not thinking what it actually means. What it really means is that whether your every day is your home or your power plant or your paper mill, whatever it is, Internet of Things is two-way street. It is how you control the small devices which are surrounding you in your everyday work or, or home setting and also gather information. This is very important. It is a massive amount of that data which is gathered by the devices and reported back to the ecosystem. So the impacts here are both the real life physical world security and the privacy. And privacy as your workplace privacy, as your company secret privacy, and your home and personal life privacy. Also, because IoT is a completely new thing, even the organizations which are helping to secure the world and helping the security professionals to think the right way started with a lot of misconceptions. The classifications got mixed. What is the attack vector? What is the attack surface? Everything was mixed up, and that's why there was no holistic approach. 
some of the misconceptions, well, it's about internet networks, because it's the internet of things, of course, then it's an internet network. So no, it's not. Of course, these devices are usually having a web interface to control them. No, it's not about web interface security. It's not about the physical device uh, security making the, the fish to sing a different song. And it's not about cloud security. Of course, it's the sharing. It's not even that. It, this is a completely new class, a unique mixture of security problems and security facets which we have to deal with. So for this reason, people started with a way too narrow mind, way too narrow approach, what to look at. So we have to look in many areas of services, many actors, again, because of the sharing ecosystem. It doesn't matter if your device is secure and your vendor selling you the stuff is secure if down the road the ecosystem itself has two-way street or even one-way street to purchase the data, it's going to be misused against your will and against what you wanted it to be done. So we have to take a completely new holistic approach, and we have to look into all the layers behind it. Or we have to say enough is enough, which means that the economic models behind the ecosystem has to be rethought. Right now, with the cold rush, nobody wants to go to rethink the economic models, so we are stuck with this multi-layer, impossible to secure world. Again, if we look at all the aspects of this, it's impossible. And we are having solutions for every single, single point of that. What really is needed is a complete new thinking of also how to build these devices, what are the design specifications, where to go, what should be done, what shouldn't be done. And even if it makes economic sense to ask the question, is it the right thing to do? Sadly, the obscurity is right now, for many, many vendors, the real answer. People think that if they hide it, if they use legislative things like Digital Millennium Copyright Act or its counterparts here in Europe around the world to say, if you touch this device, you are breaking the law. So the good people who are looking at the devices with a white hat shouldn't be doing their job because that's a breaking the copyright law. The problem here is that there's the other people called criminals, and they are not minding breaking the copyright law while they are breaking a bigger law and violating your privacy and your assets and your, your, your security. Obscurity is hogwash. The most dangerous part of this hogwash is a smokes and mirrors. The smokes and mirrors in this case is, for example, the proprietary radios. A lot of health equipment in your body are actually completely insecured. The whole theory is that you're using proprietary radio technology, proprietary radio modulation, so the bad guy wouldn't be finding out how the thing is working. Well, we live in a world of software-defined radios. So right now, for $30 from Amazon, you get the wonderful radio equipment which you can use to attack these proprietary systems and actually find where they are, how they work, find systems which have been thought to be impossible to find. So the tools are becoming commonly available to everyone and the idea that just simply hiding it would work. Also, the other thing is, again, using encryption is difficult for that reason. For example, the medical equipments, they use the same password for every single man and women, they use the same pin code so that in an emergency room you can be accessed. It also means your body has a kill switch. If you have a pacemaker, if you have an insulin pump, which is unsecured, it just takes a radio signal to tell it, well, this guy, you know, expiration date, let's give him a little bit more insulin, it's going to be fine. So we really are living in a world where these uh, security vulnerabilities, these wrong designs, this bad thinking has a huge life and death consequences, literally life and death consequences. So in the design, we should take IoT security as a priority. And for the people who are in this room in building, designing things, to take a look and hard look into what you are doing. Don't send clear text. Don't send clear text. Don't believe that if you send the clear text in a very clever way, whether it's a, it's a proprietary radio, whether it's a little bit obfuscating it over the internet, that it won't be found. Always assume that your attacker knows and will find out exactly how the device you build is going to work. The security has to be built in 
in other layers and just, oh, they won't find it out. And always remember that whatever you design is going to be used in most unexpected ways. The people who designed RFIDs for controlling logistics and packages in warehouses never thought about that will be ending up to be in your passport. People who are designing a, a remote control light bulb think, well, there's no security consideration. I mean, who cares if your living room light goes off, but, you know, off and on and off by some attacker? Then somebody in the light to the operating room and in the middle of open heart surgery, the lights go off. That's not a good day. So all the devices, and especially when we look to low commercial co consumer products, they have a tendency to end up in the weirdest places with, a, with a, uh, serious consequences if they're hacked. So don't ever think that the device you are deciding don't need to have a security because the narrow-minded way you are actually thinking it's going to be earlier up to use is not going to be representing when 10 years down the road you have sold the company and the next people are using it where it's going to end. And also never trust the network, never trust the network. The network is always going to be untrustworthy. You have to do your own job. Don't think that there, you have a firewall, VPN, and that's going to keep your life safe. So these are some of the considerations in the new game, which you, which you should be thinking. Use peer-to-peer -peer arch architecture if you can. Don't make everybody to go to sing single point of failure called the server, and if somebody takes over the server, it takes over your whole system. Also from a ever dropping interception of traffic, if you have a single point where all the traffic goes in and out, it is a single point to have a man in the middle. Think about using peer-to-peer -peer architecture if you can. Also, when you are looking for the radio, don't think about centralized star-type network radios. Just think about mesh radios. Again, it's resilient. It is attack. It's a robustness against the attack. And unpredictable roads and unpredictable channels make it very hard for the attacker to capture your traffic and interact on part. When possible, don't use public IP addresses. Don't expose your devices. Don't expose your data to the public internet. Because public internet, my biggest friend, is also my, my worst enemy. Internet is a scary, scary place with a lot of people with a different motivations and money, as Mikko said, is very strong of, of serving us. So think about dumb infrastructure. Keep the security on the edge. Think about the infrastructure to bring in dumb. Its only job is to make certain it works when you need it, but its, it's job is not to secure your data. And also, make security your pri uh, priority. Make privacy your priority. And the most important, if you don't need the data, if you don't need to know about something about your customer, why you take it? Most of the people, the answer is, I will take it because I can monetize it later. Well, think about it when you know how to monetize it. Don't collect data because it can become a, your liability. You get hacked and you pay thousands of dollars per every single person in your privacy you violate. So with that, please be careful and responsible out there. Thank you very much.